morning, Rabotai. Eid of Shabbat Shalom. Being that this is a Shabbat prior to a public fast day, this coming Tuesday, uh, unfortunately, hopefully it shouldn't be, but if the Bit HaMikdash isn't rebuilt by then, this coming Tuesday will be the public fast day of Shiva Asar Bet Amuz. Marana Shulchan Aruch and Siman Tav Kuf Nun Saif Dalit writes that the minhag is that on a Shabbat prior to Asara Bet Tevit, the 10th of Tevit and the 17th of Tammuz, the fast is announced in the Bet HaKnesset on Shabbat so that everybody is aware of the upcoming fast day and to prepare accordingly. The reason why we don't announce the other fasts, for instance, Tisha B'Av and Yom Kippur, is because they're very famous. Tisha B'Av has a lot of laws. Everybody knows it's coming. Yom Kippur, same thing. Many poskim add Tzom Gedalia also because it comes right after Rosh Hashanah, so everybody's aware of it. What sometimes takes people by surprise is Asara B'Tevit and Shiva Asar B'Tamuz, and therefore the Chachamim were mitakin to uh, announce it in the shul over Shabbat before the fast, only for Shiva Asar B'Tamuz and Asara B'Tevit. Equally as important, though, is when the fast is announced in the shul, the times for the fast, the fast beginning and fast end time, should also be announced. Now that's something that is subject to great debate, just like almost anything else in Judaism. There are many different opinions and many different calculations and formulas. However, it's not up to any random individual to open up and see, oh, there's a whole bunch of opinions. This looks like a nice one. This looks like a a uh, very average time to start and end the fast. It doesn't work like that. There are very clear guidelines based on our poskim, based on how to calculate this Zmanei Hayom. And just to give you a little bit of a perspective, at the end of the fast, a person might think, okay, you know what? Let me extend the fast a little bit. I'll fast a little bit later, which sometimes is unnecessary, but you want to keep, keep fasting? Knock yourself out. But here's where the issue begins. Sometimes... Um, according to our Zmanim, according to the, not our Zmanim, but according to the Poskim that we follow, their formulas in the Zmanim, the fast begins to drop earlier. And then according to the other Zmanim that sometimes people unknowingly or, you know, follow because of being uneducated in the topic, they go to later Zman to begin the fast. Now, with the fast like Shiva Asar B'Tamuz, it's a very, it's, by the way, the longest day fast of the year. In terms of the day, it's even longer than Tisha B'Av. So sometimes people would be uh, hungry or thirsty. They want to wake up in the morning before Alot HaShachar to eat. If you follow the wrong Zmanim, or if you follow Zmanim that aren't appropriate to us, and you start to fast a little bit later based on a different calendar, that means that according to the real Halakha, you've just eaten and or drunk on the fast day. Which means, perspective for a second, now you're no longer, first of all, you're not fasting. Second of all, you can't say, Anenu and Tfilah. Third of all, you can't get an aliyah la Torah by Vayichal Moshe. Fourth of all, if you're a Kohen, you can't go up for Birkat Kohanim by Tfilat Mincha. So you better make sure that you're following the right Zmanim because otherwise everything gets uh, thrown off. So it's important to make sure that you follow a calendar and a Rav that is well-versed in the Zmanim according to Minhag Faradim, and not just, you know, pulling Zmanim from random places on the internet. That's it's a very, very important thing, especially for us, the Sfaradim. Uh, we'll speak more about it, Bezat Hashem, over Shabbat. Have a wonderful day and Shabbat Shalom. The uh, downstairs Minyan Bezat Hashem, the earlier Minyan at 6.30 this evening, Minchak Abadat Shabbat and Arvit, up here at 7. Have a wonderful day and Shabbat Shalom.